to talk about repetitions in music, repetitions of subphrases or in measures where you might have four notes played in the repeat of the exact same four notes. And that happens in Frankness or La Candour and Bergmuller. It's a very good piece to um, learn to ply arm weight, dynamics, shape the line by not having the redundancy of the notes played exactly the same. Now because he has in the very first measure a group of four notes and then a twin of that, it makes you feel like you're in two, not in four. If you thought of this in four quarter as it's written, you would probably sound like this if you played it. One, two, a three, a four, a one, a two, a three. That makes no sense. That's not how it's really moving. Because he chooses the repetitions, he's making you feel like you're on the first half of the measure leaning and the second part of the measure you're lifting up and relaxing it. If I went into the tempo of this, you would hear me go, lean less, lean less. This one I float across all the way. Now, lean less, lean less. pretty much what I'm doing. Now I'm also using rotations um, because the rotations prevent the five on the G, and the repeated G, you have G E D C, G E D C, from sounding angular and piston poked. Uh, it rounds out the G. Now I start with uh, falling down this way, but then I go into my rotation. So this is a vector this way. Then I go into my rotation. So the rotation is counterclockwise. You probably can see it. If you play slowly, you see the rotation more, you know, extremely than you would see it when you go into tempo in a faster tempo, but it's still there. So again, lean, less, lean, rotation. Now this one is a longer line, it's a longer line, then lean. Rolling motion forward. And that makes sense because if you didn't do that motion and you just did up and down, you get. It has no shape to it. So this gives shape. Rolling forward and forward at the end. beautiful, you know, contour. This piece needs a lot of contour because of repetitions and repetitions of notes. Now this next part is, this middle section here, is definitely where you have rotations, one hand doing counterclockwise and the other hand doing clockwise, this way. But you start this way and then go into your rotation. You can see it. But I'd also lean on the first group of less. Lean less interval. Now this one you might do softer. Because here again you have an exact repetition of one, two measures. Do it again, perhaps make it an echo measure. Which means you have to have a lot of control of your arm weight. A lot of control of your arm weight because your arm weight feeds that energy down into your supple wrist. You, want, you don't want any interruption with a tight wrist of your energy flowing into your hand, which is hanging. Your hanging hand is your baseline position for the piano, hanging hand. You should always check too as you play, lift off the keys gently and see if you are indeed hanging your hand off your relaxed arms. Um, so the first time you do this, a little bit more maybe. Here in the bass, you have two seventh chords. Second one, make it less. So if I didn't make it less, that's what would happen. So you can hear the difference. Four. See how much nicer when you lift the second half of a four quarter measure. That is what generically, organically, it feels like. Particularly when it has these groups of continuous eighth notes and they feel like they should be sectioned off in two 
per measure, two beats per measure. So don't always be fooled by when you see at four quarter time that you are going to indeed be very adhered to one and two and three and four and that just can't work with this particular piece the way it's written. So when we go back here we see the second chord rolling motion. It's also extremely volatile to pokey accents to sounding robotic and up and down. So you really have to learn what you want to do. Now there was another place I wanted to point out. Yes, so there's a couple of measures, actually it's one measure, where suddenly you have a soprano with a stem up and you have a little beneath underpinning voice, call it an alto voice, um, against the upstairs. Now the upstairs is really the melody right in this measure where he does this. Inside that, he has this. You might want to bring this lower voice out a little bit more, but you don't want the listener to think that the melody is this. Because that is musically not what we see on that page. We definitely see the stem up, which is the treble line, the soloist, and we see that little meandering underpinning you want to make that definitely below and not confused with a continuation of the melody into that alto voice. Now, how do you do that? You would lean on the upstairs here. Less arm way. Less arm Peak it. Now, if we go into tempo, we have this. of the two measures, because it's now two measures that are exact repetitions, I decided I wasn't going to do them exactly the same. Even with the leaning on the first half and the less on the second, I might feed more arm weight the first time I do the two measures and lift my arm weight the second time. That's a good idea. Otherwise, again, it sounds like you're just repeating things and not thinking about what you're communicating in an artistic sense about this piece. So, lean and then little idea of what you do. You have a combination here of uh, leaning on the first four, lifting the arm weight off the second four at the beginning, second measure same thing, third and fourth measure is kind of floating across with longer line, a longer line than even two. That third and fourth measure is one long line like this. To you because this piece is more than meets the eye. It looks like, oh, it's just, you know, a lot of notes up and down, and it sounds like a study or an etude or cherny or whatever it is, but it cannot be played that way. And it's quite a beautiful uh, one page, beautiful piece that has so much interest in it uh, from a harmonic standpoint. And this measure here has a diminished chord going through it. harmonic shifts that are pulling toward the next measure as well. Um, you have a minor four chord in one measure where you have this. But against that four chord, you kind of have a diminished chord against it. It is a minor four chord in C major. It's not F major chord, but F minor. But juxtaposed through that, it's like a diminished chord against it too. So that's quite poignant there. And that wants to resolve into the next measure. So you want to think of resolutions. Harmonic resolutions means lift your arm weight off. So lean, resolve it. That's the echo phrase there. E, it's a little bit broadened. So 
think I pretty much covered most of what I wanted to to say today about repetitions and how to artistically um, render them in your practicing. Now you can also practice very slowly um, with this same thing in mind, the same shapes, uh, and then you incrementally move up your tempo.